the Islamic Republic of Iran still threatens Israel on seven fronts, not just in Lebanon. Yesterday, Israel announced the capture of advanced Iranian weapons. The Iranian regime sent the weapons to terrorist death squads in Jenin, Samaria, the northern West Bank. The Iranian weapons were meant for launching bloody attacks on Israeli civilians. These terrorists have already launched shooting attacks and attempted suicide bombings in Tel Aviv and across the country. The Iranian weapons included dozens of rockets, motors, mines, remote detonation systems, sniper rifles, and more. Iran's IRGC Quds Force, based in Syria, was behind the arms smuggling. These are the same Iranian terror agents behind the bloodshed in Iraq and Syria. They also stand behind Hezbollah's attacks from Lebanon. While there may be a ceasefire with Iran's terror army in Lebanon, the Hezbollah, there is no ceasefire with the Islamic Republic itself. Even the ceasefire in Lebanon is in question. Hezbollah is already violating the ceasefire, and we are only one and a half days in. Hezbollah terrorists are trying to sneak back to Israel's border. The operatives are mixing in with returning civilians. That's why Israeli forces opened fire on multiple groups of Hezbollah terrorists. That is the meaning of Israel's freedom of action in the imperfect but agreed-upon ceasefire. That is also why Israel's leaders did not yet call the 60,000 Israeli civilians who were forced to leave their homes to return. Hezbollah is testing to see if the ceasefire will indeed be enforced and will undoubtedly challenge Israel again and again within the framework of this agreement while it continues to try and rearm and prepare itself for its next act of aggression against Israel. Now let's take some questions from our audience watching live on social media. Thank you, Ruth. This first question is from YouTube. N Nabi Berry announced a parliamentary election on January 9th. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Can there be elections free of Hezbollah interference and threats? So thank you for that um, question. We have seen in the past that the Hezbollah was using the inherent weakness embedded in democracy in an election system in order to wedge its way into the political system and into the Lebanese government and the parliament. And that is exactly what it's going to do on those particular elections as well. So no, this cannot be a real free election because we know that the Hezbollah has very aggressive mechanisms of entering where they want to enter. And if anybody stands in their way, they know how to deal with these people. And this thought or mentality is still in the minds of the Lebanese people. However, I encourage the Lebanese people, following what had happened, following the weakening of the Hezbollah by the Israeli IDF, in order to take their country back into their own hands. Thank you. Our next question is from Instagram. Marjorie asks, are the reports of Hezbollah already breaking the ceasefire true? Absolutely. The Hezbollah is a designated terrorist organization. The raison d'etre, the very epitome of why it exists, is to destroy the state of Israel and its civilians and serve as a kind of a buffer zone for the Iranian Republic. That's why there is no trust in the Hezbollah, and that's why we need to watch every step that they make. In fact, some Hezbollah operatives had already tried to embed themselves in the civilian population going back to southern Lebanon and to move closer to the Israeli um, uh, soldiers standing there. And the soldiers had shot at them uh, three times, if I'm not mistaken, in the past 24 hours. So yes, the breaches had taken place, but also they will. And the Hezbollah will continue to challenge 
Israel in the framework of this agreement. Thank you. Christine on Instagram asks, is it true that Hamas is now also seeking a ceasefire with Israel? Well, one of the good things about this very imperfect agreement with the Hezbollah is that Israel managed to differentiate between the two arenas, between the northern arena and the war with the Hezbollah and the southern arena, the war with Hamas, also um, waging in the West Bank. Yes, the Hamas actually feels isolated right now, and it even said on the first day or two that it sees the Hezbollah as a betrayer. However, they said a few hours later that they like the Hezbollah, they like what they did, this will allow them to rearm, but they said in the same breath that they seek a ceasefire, they seek a break. They did not say a peace, they did not say an end of the war, they did say a ceasefire in order to regroup and recatch their breath because they did get a lot of fire, particularly in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Our next question is from Rich on Instagram. Why did Israel agree to this ceasefire? Was it due to international pressure? Very good question. So obviously there is an issue of armament from the United States of America, undoubtedly. And this armament and the shipments are due to come in following the ceasefire. That's number one. Second of all, there's also an issue of resting, regrouping, rearming, and giving our attention to other arenas. Although there's a very significant presence of the IDF still in Lebanon and probably will be in the next 60 days. But very importantly, and this was asked beforehand, there is a success in separating the two arenas. No, the whole warring, enveloping of Israel and against Israel by the Iranian uh, regime via its various proxies has been broken. And the Hezbollah and the Hamas had been separated. And that's one of the reasons that Israel went for this very imperfect uh, agreement, temporary agreement. Thank you. This is our final question. Sharon on Instagram asks, what if Hezbollah is just regrouping now during this ceasefire? What would the IDF do in that case? So first of all, there's a lot of eyeing the uh, Syrian-Lebanese border for shipments and for truckloads of weapons and armaments that make their way to the Hezbollah in the south of Lebanon. Israel stops that. Plus, there will be international backers for this surveillance in order to stop those shipments. But of course, Hezbollah is going to try to rearm. As I said, this is the raison d'etre, the very epitome of this designated terrorist organization, while absolutely threatening the lives of the Lebanese themselves, because they don't care about Lebanon. All they care about is the destruction of Israel for the purpose of serving their master, the Islamic Republic of Iran, and therefore the weariness and the skepticism by Israel is very much there, and they will be watched. Thank you so much for watching and for joining and for being part of us every day. And we'd also like to remind you, Giving Tuesday is just a few days away. To help support our mission, please visit our website or go to the Giving Tuesday link across our social media. Now that's all we have time for. Thank you for tuning in and come back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Israel time, 8 a.m. East Coast time. Thank you.